In case you're just tuning in, I'm talking with award-winning author Craig Pittman. His latest book is entitled The Scent of Scandal. Now, Craig, what brings you here to Key West? Um, well, uh, the Key West Garden Club invited me to come down and speak, and uh, also I talked to the uh, public library, and I'm doing a book signing at the Lucky Street Gallery as well. So, okay. Is this your first time in Key West? Uh, I've been to Key West before. It's the first time I've been here for, for a book signing. Mm -hmm. So do you, you like it, right? Oh, it's a fun, <laughs> it's a fun place to visit, and mm -hmm. very good food. Too. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure <laughs> that they enjoyed at the Garden Club hearing you speak. Mm -hmm. Now, Craig, I mentioned earlier that this isn't your first book. You've written some other books in the past. Yes. Uh, the first book was called Paving Paradise, uh, Florida's Vanishing Wetlands and the Failure of No Net Laws. And it's about how there are all these laws on the books that are supposed to protect wetlands, but they don't. Uh, and uh, it specifically looks at uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which is supposed to be the federal agency protecting wetlands, and how they, uh, in fact, just are like a permit factory, just cranking out the permits allowing people to destroy wetlands. Um, they issue more of those permits in Florida than anywhere else in the country. Uh, and the time period uh, that's covered in the book, uh, which is 1999 to 2003, they issued 12,000 permits to wipe out wetlands in Florida. Can you guess how many they turned down? How many? One. Really? Just one. Okay. Don't you think that guy was really mad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. 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 Okay, so that was one of the books. Is there another one yes. as well? Yes. Uh, the second book was called Manatee Insanity, mm -hmm. Inside the War Over Florida's Most Famous Endangered Species. And it's about the uh, battles over how to protect manatees, whether manatees deserve protection. Jimmy Buffett is a big character in the book, as you might guess. Okay. Uh, and it talks about sort of the struggles between, say, the Manatee Club and the Audubon Society, which ended up in court at one point. Uh, and then uh, other battles as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's a, it was an interesting way to explore not just the history of protecting the manatee, but sort of a, a, a way to talk about the history of Florida and how things had changed that in the old days, the early settlers looked at manatees as a source of food mm -hmm. uh, that could supply you know, everybody in, the, in town for, for days and days and days with meat. And now they're considered to be the sort of icon of Florida wilderness. Uh, I call them the endangered species you see in your backyard. Mm -hmm. So your books kind of revolve around environmental issues. Yes. Is this how it always has been? Like, is that something that fascinates you, Craig? Yes. Well, and also that's the beat that I cover at the newspaper. Um, I, I'm on the. Uh, I tell people I cover environmental issues. So I'm writing about everything from air pollution in Pensacola to things happening down here in the Keys as well. Um, uh, I did a big story on the Key Largo wood rat, for instance, um, and uh, and how the taxpayers are paying to have them captive bred. Um, and so uh, it's, a, it's an interesting topic. Uh, the environment in Florida is where you hit that sort of bumpy intersection between politics, the law, and science. Uh, plus, uh, any job where you get paid now and again to go out and ride around on a boat is a good job in my book. A very good <laughs> job, right? Yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing investigative reporting, Craig? Um, well, I've been with The Times since 1989, and I've been on the environmental beat since 1998. Okay, so you've been doing it for quite, quite I'm, a bit. I'm, I'm almost getting good at it, I think. If oh, I stick with it a little longer, I might finally have mastered it. So. No, don't say that, because <laughs> you have been good at it for a very long time. In fact, I was reading up on you, Craig, and it was quoted that one of your professors at your university that you went to called you the most destructive thing on campus. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure he meant it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a good thing. Yes, it means yes. you were doing your job. Yes, we were writing all kinds of stories about uh, an ethics commission investigation of the university president. Uh, the fact that the university owned a yacht for lobbying purposes at a time when they were cutting faculty salaries. I mean, just all kinds of investigative stuff like that, and uh, they, they didn't like it. They didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> no, but it had to be done. You yes. were doing your job. Yes. Craig, what are you working on right now? Um, I just had a big project published in the Times this past weekend uh, about springs, about Florida springs, and how they're this icon of Florida that uh, drew people to the state for, for decades and now they're in big trouble. Um, some of the major springs, their flow has been reduced or even started flowing backwards mm -hmm. because of overpumping of the aquifer. Uh, the water that's coming out is often polluted by uh, fertilizer, uh, sewage, septic waste, uh, and that pollution is fueling the growth of big algae blooms that are, in many cases, toxic to human health. So swimmers will get rashes, uh, respiratory problems, et cetera. Wow. And uh, what's really kind of scary is that uh, geolo state geologists have discovered that in some of the freshwater springs, they're starting to see a rise in salt, which means that the freshwater has shrunk to the point where the salt water that's underneath is intruding and coming up, which is wow. a bad sign for our drinking water supply. Absolutely. And this was something you uncovered recently? Yes. Uh, and I, I've spent about two years working on the stories. Wow. So now it's out, out yes. to the public. Yes. 
Craig, I've been asking guests on the show because it is December, the holidays are here. Mm -hmm. We've been talking a little bit about holiday traditions, so oh. I have to ask you before you leave today, okay. do you have a favorite holiday tradition? A favorite holiday tradition? Uh, well, I have two kids, and my wife came up with this great idea. You know, some people have the elf on the shelf kind of thing that is supposed to keep an eye on the kids. Mm -hmm. She came up with the Santa sock monkey. It's a, <laughs> it's a sock monkey in a Santa hat, and we call him Pierre, and Pierre pops up in different places around the house and, and is supposed to report back to Santa on how the kids are doing and whether they're being good. And on Christmas Eve, he disappears, and on Christmas Day, he's on the Christmas tree dressed in his full Santa regalia. And then mm -hmm. the, after Christmas Day, he disappears, and you don't see him again <laughs> until the next year. So That's she came up with all, it's a very elaborate story, <laughs> and the kids, ate, they eat it up. Oh, they love yeah. it. So That is a great story. Yeah. Well, that's a good tradition. And of course, back to the book. If anybody wants to pick up the copy of their own book, yes. they can find it online, right? Craig? Yes, uh, it's sold on Amazon, both in hardback and Kindle version. Mm -hmm. uh, they're working on an audiobook version as well, which was a first for me. The, the narrator called me up to make sure he had pronunciations correct and so forth. Uh, and um, uh, Paving Paradise is also available the same way. Uh, Manatee Insanity is only available in hardback, though. No Kindle on that, unfortunately. So. Okay. Well, hopefully everybody can pick up their copy. If you have more, you want more information on Craig, just check out his website that you see on the bottom of the screen. Craig, thank you for being with me, and I hope you can make thank it back to Key West. Soon. I'd love to. <laughs> I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.